Hello, beginning farmer friends. Have we got something planned for you today? It is afternoon, the very first day of April. This is not an April Fool's joke because this will probably come out a week later because I am very behind in videos. Yes, we did get the chicken wagon done. Yes, you already know that because it's been in all the videos, but I also got the spot cleaned out where the chicken wagon used to be. That is very cool, but none of that has anything to do with what we're going to do today. What we need to do right this moment is unhook the grinder mixer. We're just going to leave it right here. I actually ground some chicken feed that I never unloaded. We're just going to unhook it. We'll unload it later because I'm very excited to do what we need to do today. And in order to get done what we need to do today, we need to do it right this moment. Safety first. We're going to put a chalk block under the wheel so it doesn't roll away. We're going to jack it up because we need the 4430. But the 4430 is just part of what we need today. Actually, we don't really need the 4430. We need to borrow the 4430 so we can get... I, uh, we're just going to do it. Besides the 4430, we need these. If you've been watching the Beginning Farmer channel for quite some time, you might have a pretty good idea of why we need these, but you probably don't know what I have in store for these jumper cables. Okay, scratch that. You probably do know what I have in store with these jumper cables because, I mean, I'm going to jump the red truck. But you don't know what I'm going to use the red truck for. That's what I meant to say. Let's see if it starts. We're going to go with plan B because these batteries are obviously toasted. I've had the tractor running for about 10 minutes on the battery on the truck. Nothing's happening. And besides that, all we want anyways is this water. Oh no, it's got water in it. Is this water tank. So I guess we'll have to get a little water out and then we'll go put it in the hog cart because we need it for what we're going to do. My son's just going to drag this tank into the hog cart. We'll go put a little water in it and I'll just let you know what we're going to do. We're going to go burn a ditch. Actually, hopefully two ditches. Actually, hopefully all of our ditches, which is two ditches. Like I said, we're gonna burn our ditch. I don't know if they burn ditches where you're from, but where we're from, they burn ditches. And the idea is that you get rid of all the dead old grass that was in there, get rid of the weeds, hopefully, and you know, maybe you get a nice good stand of grass that's solid in the ditch. Do you know, in the past, we have actually grazed the ditches before with our Dexter cattle. It's a nice thing to do when, you know, you're around all day and so if they get out on the road you can go get them but it's not as nice to do when you're not going to be around oh yeah my wife just told me it also keeps the shrubby things from growing that's the technical term she was almost a horticulture student almost but it keeps the shrubby things from growing so that then they are killed off when it's young and then hopefully we can take care of it the next ditch that we're going to do that's where all the shrubby things live that are huge so hopefully we're going to burn it off and then come back attack it with a chainsaw What we're attempting to do is burn it in small sections so nothing gets out of control. The other day, there was a fire down in that ditch around the corner from us. The fire department had to come out on that one because it wasn't done in small sections. It did get out of control and it went out of a field, which no fault necessarily of the people. Sometimes a wind just kicks up and it happens. Hopefully these small sections keep it from happening. That's the idea at least. But fire, kind of dangerous. This is what it looks like when one ditch gets done. It basically burns off the grass pretty fast, doesn't burn much else. What I want to do is come back with my little 
chainsaw trimmer that I've got on my steel FS-130, something like that, yeah, 130, and cut down these little shrubs. This ditch is very clean. The next ditch we're going to, not so much, and it makes working on the electric fence very difficult. The other important thing to remember when you are burning, using a torch or a match or whatever, is that you do it so that it is burning away from you. So what we were doing was with the wind at our back, we had stopped the burn up here, and that way we just kind of were burning to where it would stop, and we were doing it in small chunks. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the smart way to do things. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the torch and I'm gonna burn kind of like a stop right here, just a line and put it out maybe a few feet wide, and then we'll start burning that way, or actually burning this way, but moving that way. That way things won't get out of hand, and just rip around the corner away from us. We also brought a water tank out here on the back of the 4430 because, you know, fire. Burning is kind of an interesting thing because obviously when Iowa was a tall grass prairie, which it was, burning was something that happened naturally. You had the bison going across the fields, or not the fields, you had the bisons going across the prairie eating everything down and then from time to time there would be a prairie fire that would just take off and wipe everything out, knock down that old growth, and then build new growth on the prairies as well. So. In some ways, we're doing that same thing in our ditch, minus the cattle. I mean, we've only grazed them a little bit. So far so good, we have burned everything and not burned anything that we didn't want to burn. The other nice thing about getting this brush cleared off in the spring is that it allows us to come along that fence which is electric and clear it away. We mow part of it, we brush cut some of it with my string trimmer. We do a lot to keep the fence as hot as possible because then that also keeps our interior cross fences as hot as possible. And having a good start in the spring makes doing it in the summer and midsummer and late summer and fall all the more easy. Especially, is it easy or easier? Especially if I get those trees cut down. If I get the trees cut down, then we'll be cooking with Crisco. If you look down this fence line, you can tell that I've done a pretty good job of keeping it cleared away, coming down with a string trimmer, knocking it away from the fence and down to the edge of the ditch. I would like to get it to the point where I could come through with either a push mower or a riding mower, or maybe one of those two-wheeled string trimmer type of deals. It also appears I need to come out and do some fencing repairs. Let's see, hot ground, hot ground. Ground wire is disconnected. Probably a deer ran through it. most important thing is to remember that we are not professionals, but we do do as much to be prepared for this as we can. Over there, we've got the tractor with a water wagon on it. We've got like 300 gallons of water. We are doing back burns so that it doesn't get out of control. We are controlling where it's burning as best we can. We're wetting down all the fence posts as we go along. We're taking all the precautions that we can, doing the best that we can to burn this. And honestly, I just I feel like this is part of Crooked Gap 2.0. That's something that I talked about in the past that I just really want to work on upping Crooked Gap Farm. And I think kind of cleaning these ditches up is part of it because when people come to the farm, it's one of the first things they see. So hopefully we didn't do anything wrong and you didn't notice it if we did do anything wrong. You know what I mean. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day, no matter where you are, no matter when it is. If you burn ditches, I would love to hear about it. Put it in the comments down below.